Welcome back to MMA Odds Break. I'm Frank Trigg. This week, we're talking to the tattoo terror Johnny Cisneros, getting ready to fight Mikhail Parlo coming up here on Bellator on April 4th up in Reno, Nevada. Johnny, it's the first time that you and I have talked. How are you doing, bud? I'm doing great. Training's going good. Life is great. And uh, I'm ready to do this, man. First, let's talk about Joker. That's uh, where you're training right now. Um, how is it training with him? And is it better now that he's retired as opposed to when he was still fighting? A lot better right now because focus a little bit more on the need that we need to do to, you know, win versus before we were just beating the shit out of each other, <laughs> yeah, yeah. you know, but, uh, but yeah, it's a lot better. You know, it's a lot better now. We get to slow things down and refine those techniques and fine tune. Let's talk about Mikhail Parlo. He's your opponent coming up. You're eight and two. He's 11 and two. So record wise, you guys are pretty close. Mm -hmm. How do you see this fight breaking down? How do you see Mikel as a partner, as an opponent coming across that ring? Uh, you know, he seems like an aggressive striker. You know, it looks like he likes to bang, you know, I like to bang, but, you know, I'm ready to go wherever he wants to take it. If you had to describe to somebody your style at home that's never seen you fight before, how would you describe your style? Um, I'm an aggressive striker, and if the chance is for, if the opening is there for a takedown, I will go for the takedown. And if there's a chance for me to ground and pound somebody out, I will. As if there's a chance for a submission, I'm on top of that too. You know, there's... Not just one particular way that I would like to win. My deal is, is I want the crowd to remember my name and I want them to say, win or lose, that guy went out there and he, he, he went out there and he went after it. Let's go back to three fights ago. Joshua Alvarez, uh, you lost him by uh, KO punches. Um, that was back in King of the Cage on December 20th of 2012. Yes, sir. Then you didn't fight again to Daniel Hernandez April 11th of 2013. So you get, you get a pretty long break in there, about about five months. And mm -hmm. then you had another long break when you fought Melvin uh, Costa in King of the Cage. And you decisioned him, and that was October 31st of 2013. Are you a guy that likes to fight about three times every 12 months? Or is it was there something else going on between 2000, December 2012 and October 2013? Because you, you kind of take these long, lay these long layoffs, these long breaks. Yeah, usually, you know, since I started fighting, I've been trying to knock them out. I've been trying to get my record going as fast as possible, you know. I'm a little bit older in age, so I have father time against me. So I was just racking them up. Three months, let's fight. Three months, let's fight. Three months, let's fight. When I took my first loss, it hurt me pretty bad uh, mentally. So I had to go back to the drawing boards then I fought again, and I got submitted, and that really, really, really pissed me off. So, you know, I had to I had to refocus on just my well-rounded game versus just striking. And, um, you know, I, I, I did what I had to do, and when I fought Melvin Costa, it was a whole different fighter in me. You know, I fought tactical and strategic, where before I just went into the fight, ready to fight, and now, now that I, you know, I took those losses, you know, it just opened up my mind to how many different tools that I could use to fight, you know. So now I'm not just go in there and knock you out, Johnny. Now I'm going in there and try to beat you mentally and strategically, you know. So how hard was that to grow as a as a fighter? Because you were you were on a six fight win streak, or, or no, you were on a, a seven, seven fight win streak when seven, you had your first loss, and you were just, you were just. Really, that late to all of a sudden get that first loss to kind of get yourself through it. How much did you have to grow as a fighter? How tough was it to walk into practice the next couple of days and go, look, I got to figure this out? You know, there was a lot more, there was a lot more behind that loss. You know, um, I, I don't, I don't come from, I don't have a lot of money. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not a guy that has a lot of money, you know, Four days before, I'm not, and I'm, I'm also not one to make excuses, but I, I will call it like it is. I, I took the fight. I was full blown sick. I had the flu four days before the fight, and in my mind, I was, you beat seven guys in a row with no hesitation. Let's make it an eight. I went in there and I tried to go for the kill, and I got caught. Best thing that could have happened to me. You know, I went back to the drawing boards. I, I sharpened up. I got better. And, you know, it hurt inside 
but deep down inside I knew that it was it was the right thing that could it was the best thing that could have happened to me you know going into my second fight you know there was holes in my game and my jiu-jitsu I got submitted I, I fought off a lot of submissions at the end I got submitted I learned a lot of things from that fight you know don't let them get the first step on you. You take the first step on them. I know how good and I know how well-rounded I am. And, you know, in this sport, it only takes a split second to make that mistake to where you're two steps behind. I made those mistakes and, you know, I've, I've really thought about it and been more strategic towards my next approach. And when I fought Melvin Costa, I refused to lose because I knew that my tools my tool my my toolbox was a lot more filled with tools than I knew I did that I knew I had you know and that's how I go into every fight now you know now I'm just not I'm not just striker Johnny you know I used to like to just bang now I I wrestle now I grapple you know and I maintain my sharpness in my in my stand up and uh you know it's it's working out gr great for me you know I, I have backup plans now, you know? That's smart. That, it, does take, it takes a lot to get there, especially as you get a little bit older, how to, how to change. And, uh, you know, teaching old dog new tricks is, is a difficult yeah. task, and you seem to, to embrace it very well, at least in your last fight. And hopefully it runs into, again, here with uh, Mikel Parlo. Well, ladies and gentlemen, that's Johnny Cisneros getting ready to fight. Mikel Parlo coming up here on Bellator MMA April 4th. Johnny, thanks for coming on the MMA Odds Break. I appreciate you being so open and candid. Good luck, and we'll talk to you soon, buddy. Thank you, Frank. Big fan. Guys, Frank trades the man, and and that's it. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, bud. Look out, man. Uh, I'm, I'm gonna do this. Look out for me, guys. I, I'm I'm gonna get up there. Thanks, bud. We'll talk to you later. All right, man. You have a good day.